How's it going everyone? And I'd like to start this video by once again apologizing for the length of time it's taking me to both build this gimbal and post videos. I didn't get a lot of time over Christmas but I did however receive these brushless motors in the post which was nice. And the larger motor there is for the yaw axis and the two smaller motors are for the pitch and the roll axes. I did actually order 180T motors for the pitch and the roll but they sent me 200T motors. I'm not sure it's going to make that much difference but my mission was to mount the motor onto the frame which I'd already built. Ideally I should have started with the motors and built the frame on top of them but I had really little idea of what I was building at the beginning of this project. And I found this old circle drill bit thingy I guess you can call it, looks about 60 years old and I found it in my father's basement but it was really cool, it gave me a nice circle and a nice plate that I could start the process with And the problem I faced here was that I need, my shaft bolt was 8mm and the hole in the, through the motor was 12mm and so I had to have some way of holding the face plate around about the middle so I just ground down the cap of a, of a bolt here to the right diameter and that enabled me to just hold it in place for the meantime didn't have to be super accurate but just thereabouts. Normally the hole in the motor is used to run cables through, but in this instance I needed to house my main shaft bolt. Here I'm just waxing up some small 3mm bolts. I'm going to wrap carbon fibre around the threads and I just don't want them to stick. And I got the plates mounted onto the motors in the right place and it's all ready to start the carbon fiber process. And I just started wrapping the threads with carbon fiber and I wanted a, a nice thread housing just to ensure that the bolts were dead accurate on the motor. and the small 3mm bolts came out very easily and I just tidied up this a bit I just like to keep things tidy even though this is the underside it just helps to see where I'm at these, these little thread housings were very handy actually and even at this stage I wasn't 100% sure how it was going to pan out but I had a fairly good idea in my head here I'm just enlarging the plate hole just so that the bearings of the motor and the bearings of the frame can meet properly and I had to make these threaded ferrules and I made them out of some spare nuts that I had and this enabled me to align the shaft bolt in the dead center of the motor and this was critical if I wanted an, an accurate motor mount on the frame and I had to make this little sort of carbon fiber washer because that would enable the the two bearing sets to to meet in the middle and have friction and actually work and I decided to put a little slot in the frame just so I can get a bit more carbon fiber around it just to make sure, probably didn't need it but um, 
Hey, there's nothing like over engineering. Got everything taped up so I wouldn't get any resin on the motors. And this was the first stage in getting the actual plate connected to the carbon fibre frame. I could get the double bias carbon on there and really really get the strength into the structure. This layer of double bias carbon provides all the strength of the joint. Everything from this point on is trying to make it pretty because it, it really looks like a dog's breakfast. And unfortunately when a vacuum bagging system or an autoclave is not in reach it's very very difficult to make something look pretty with just wet layup carbon fiber type building but it certainly can be done and here I'm just making the the structure with balsa wood and I needed some kind of carbon tube to house the three millimeter bolt heads and fortunately the six millimeter bolt was just the right diameter and so I decided to make some well, some carbon fiber tubes from that really I just wrapped around some double bias and then I just put an extra bit on there so I could get some leverage to to get the bolt out I really waxed these bolts because there's a lot of carbon fiber on the thread but it came out pretty pretty easily and then I could just clean it up and I just use the drill again to get it pretty much round and then I could get rid of some of the thread inside and bore it out to exactly the right diameter of the of the small three millimeter bolt heads and I came up with this jig that enabled me to hold the structure in place and I could actually I could actually screw down the carbon fiber rods onto the bolt heads and it would also keep the whole unit stable while I wrap carbon fiber around and, and try to get it all nice and this, this really was quite a took a long time I don't know, I just, I just like things looking looking pretty, but unfortunately this is, is just not easy. Really fiddly, and I find that it's best to just do this in stages, just do a little bit. And here I'm using some blue tack. Uh, that's what we call it here in New Zealand. I'm not too sure what it's called in other parts of the world, but the sticky blue clay stuff. And that enables one to really push the wet carbon fibre down onto the tricky mould shape and then when it was all set I could just cut those rods off and it gave me a really nice bolt head housing in the end I was really pleased with it and I just continued the next day with another step um, a bit more blue tack and let that set And always safety first with carbon fiber. You, know, you don't want that stuff in your lungs. And the last the piece of the puzzle was just to wrap strand around the outside there and, and that was fairly straightforward. And then I got on my sanding tools and just spent a lot of time getting it down, making it look nice. And it worked pretty pretty well and I was really happy with it. Got it down to a nice sort of carbon matte finish and all the curves all worked. I had to do a bit of fiddling around with it to fix a few little things but by and large it was all worked out really nice.